the first step here is to make the coordinates of these points make sense, I need to align this to a coordinate system. And I need to base my coordinate system uh, primarily on my main datum, which is this small cylinder. So basically the axis of this main datum and, and its center point should be on the origin and the axis should be perfectly coincident with one of the primary axes of the coordinate system. So the only thing I need to add as far as construction geometry goes is another point, a midpoint between these two. So from the home tab, I can add a point, just select these two, and it's between two points at 50%. So that's everything I need to do the actual alignment. Now. The alignment of a measured entity, like a scan, isn't from the alignment tab. It's actually from the measured tab because we're transforming the measured data and not doing a scan to CAD alignment. So under transform measured data, our target is our scan. And then we have the option to select geometry and it'll apply the same transformation to that geometry. Now this is extracted geometry. That would be our two cylinders and our two planes. So I'm going to select those. Everything else is constructed or dependent on those, so they'll automatically update. I go next. Now the method we want to use is called interactive alignment. And specifically here, because I don't want to use a plane, a vector, and then a position in that order, I'm going to pick the XYZ method. Now this method has more things than we need to actually enter, so we just basically enter as many entities as we need to lock down all the degrees of freedom. So I'm going to start with the position. I want the, the origin to be right there, that center position. Then I'm going to say the z-axis is going to be coincident with this cylinder axis. And then I want the x-axis or y-axis, whatever you prefer, to be perfectly coincident with a line between two points. Now we don't actually need the line. Instead, we can click on x and then we can click that point and then hold the control key and click that point. And it'll basically infer the line that connects those two points. The right hand view here is giving us a preview. If we don't like the way this is arranged, if we want to flip the other way with the positive X in the other direction, we can just use a little flip arrow here. But I did like it the way it was. So I'm gonna hit accept. And now we're gonna hit recalculate or refresh, and that's going to recalculate all the dependent construction entities. All right, so now we have all of our points. Now we can click on the point and we can look at the properties, but that's not very convenient. So what we want is we want tags or annotations to show the coordinates of all these different points. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to right click somewhere in the graphical view and change our annotation preset to detailed. So you may see your entities automatically spread out to the edges of the screen. And that just is this automatic and you can't move them. Um, but what you can do is just click snapped and then they stay wherever you put them. So we have the cylinder and you can kind of arrange them. I have the rear tag or the rear point, sorry, the center point and then the front point. And I can do the same thing here. I can put the cylinder over here. I have the rear point the midpoint, and the front point. Now you can see if you look into these numbers, and it's really the x, y coordinates that we're interested in. The z coordinate is in and out of the bores, so that really doesn't matter to us in this particular case. We can see that the center points are 0, 0, 0, and that these points are at 0, 0, and some number in the z. So that's just confirming that we did our alignment correctly and that it is perfectly uh, orthogonal and coincident with this uh, cylinder axis and its center. So then we look at the half bore cylinder, and this is where we can look at the, for example, the Y. So Y you see from the coordinate system is up and down. So we can see that the front point here, the Y is low or negative by three ten thousandths of an inch. And in this case, the back point is high by three ten thousandths of an inch. So that's showing us that we have twist and the twist is really probably twist around the long neck basically. Now, if looking at the X component is a little trickier because we have uh, a nominal dif difference here, right? We have some distance between the two pores. So if we just look at the midpoint, we can see this is 20.9978. 
If we look at the back point, we're 29977, so that's one ten thousandth low. And then this one is 29978. Now that's very likely just rounding. So this is just a bit more of a direct coordinate based method to analyze the parallelism between these two bores.